Hello, I am Marco Winska, and in the FPGA Vision Lecture, I show you how to design an FPGA for lane detection of street scenes. And for the implementation, we use a remote lab. In this video, I will show you how to use a board that you can, you can have in your lab. And um, you have to select the board. And uh, I did some research and found uh, this combination. It's actually two boards. It's an FPGA board from Teresic plus an HDMI receiver board that can be attached to it. Costs about 500 US dollars. And um, let's have a closer look at it. The video input is on this additional board. It's the HDMI RX HSMC, so HDMI receiver with a HSMC connector. The signal then goes to the DE10 standard board. Here you have a Cyclone 5 FPGA and here you have a VGA output. So this is the signal pass. In addition, you have a DRAM, which we're not using in our experiment, plus some inputs. You have buttons, uh, you have switches, and you have um, several segment display and uh, LEDs. For the design, you need VGL files and the entity for this evaluation board can be generated with the Teresic system builder. Project name is Lane. We want to use VHDL and here we select the onboard components that we're going to use. Also for the HSMC header, we select the HDMI receiver. Then we can generate the entity. And here we have the VHDL code for our design. This is the top level and uh, all the design files are provided on our website. Here we have the entity as generated by the system builder. And then in the architecture, we have um, different functionalities. First thing we have is a controller for the HDMI receiver. This controller is provided by Teresic and it configures and controls the HDMI receiver. Then we have the signal processing and uh, this is taken from our remote lab VHDL code. All the submodules are identical to our code, so um, there are no changes required. And uh, here we invoke these submodules. Then we have the output of the signal processing. We added some functionality so that we can select to get the output of our signal processing or the unmodified input. This is useful for controlling our video source. And finally, there is some circuitry to analyze the video signal. This is just an example of uh, how you can measure things um, on your design. So here we have uh, a circuitry that measures the clock frequency of the HDMI signal. We place all the source files in a working directory. Mm -hmm. Then we start Quartus Prime, new project wizard, Working directory, project name is lane. We add all the source files, select the site on 5 FPGA. Don't forget to import the pin assignments. And then we start synthesis. This takes some time and then synthesis is completed. So now we are in the lab and we want to try out our system. First, have a look at the setup. We have a Raspberry Pi as a video source. We have our Teresic board with the HDMI receiver and the output is connected to the monitor. We switch on the Teresic board and we get the standard image here on the screen. Now we program the FPGA with the design that we've implemented. Open the programmer, auto detect. We want to choose this device. Yes, we want to override it. Then we select the FPGA, change file, output files. There is our SOF. We want to program it and start. Now the image on the screen disappears, so we have our design loaded, but um, we don't see an output image yet because we have to run software for the HDMI receiver. And to do this, we change 
to the file explorer, double click on the batch file and now the software is starting and um, there we have it. This is uh, the desktop of the Raspberry Pi and here I have a small script to play a video scene. Double click, execute and here we have uh, a video of a street scene. And now we can go to the board and um, switch on the processing. So this is the switch here and you can see that we have the output of the lane detection. You can see the edges in the image and this shows us that the algorithm is working. Also you can see that on the board we have an indicator of FR74, so frequency 74 megahertz. This means uh, that the uh, board has detected the clock frequency of the 720p video. Now that you've seen the hands-on lab, we can compare it to the remote lab. The advantage of the hands-on lab is that you don't need internet access. You can use a embedded or an external logic analyzer for debugging and also use the LEDs and seven segment display. Uh, you can make experiments with motion video and uh, for additional functionality you have a DRAM memory on board. For the remote lab you have also some advantages. There are no costs for purchases. It can be used free. You can use it anywhere where you have internet connection, so uh, at work, at home, in the library, or even in a train. Compile times for the FPGAs are faster and um, as an additional benefit you can measure the power consumption of the FPGA core to have an insight into operating conditions of your digital design. I just mentioned debugging, so some words about that. First step in debugging should always be VHDL simulation. And there's a separate video about VHDL simulation in the FPGA vision lecture. FPGA debugging is sensible if you have uh, dynamic system behavior. So for example, in this scene you see that the car drives into a tunnel. And if you want your system to detect this change of brightness and adapt to it, then uh, using an FPGA emulation makes sense. So first you can simulate 5 or 10 images, no problem. Um, but then if you want to observe um, the behavior of your system, it makes sense to have an FPGA and observe the system behavior with a logic analyzer or with uh, a monitor. There are more videos available on the lane detection algorithm, on circuit design, VHDL simulation and usage of the remote lab. So please check them out. Also on our website you find all the source files for designing with remote lab and the Terasic boards. So I hope you find the information useful.